Bob <clears throat> and friends, as a historian, I'm fascinated by the different versions of reality that are often presented. And so I must give you my version of how I found myself delivering a speech tonight. <laughs> my understanding of the sequence of events is that I told Dr. Sokol on Friday that I could adjust my plans and come to the dinner. After which I received a request to deliver a speech. <laughs> and I thought it might be a speech introducing the honorees whom I respect greatly. But it turned out that they are already well supplied with honorees. So I am here without a specific topic. <laughs> and if I had known it earlier, I would have enabled you all to write little notes to me. But let me make uh, a few observations. For me, the name John McCloy has tremendous significance. And it is because in a year in which we are engaged in such a bitter domestic debate, to remember a generation that was dedicated to national service, that interpreted national service in terms of objectives that the whole country should share, and that in the end, should contribute to greater peace among nations and to bring about a Western system and, of course, one of the great tasks, said McCloy said himself, was the reconciliation between Germany and the United States. And uh, the interesting thing about the influence of, Mc of Jack McCloy is that he never had any of the high national security offices. He undertook specific missions, and once they were completed, he returned to his uh, to to New York where he, of course, also had a very prestigious standing. When I was appointed National Security Advisor, McCloy came to see me and said, you have never lived through a crisis at the White House level, and you ought to make sure not to lose contact with the American people and he gave me some advice on where I should go when I go on vacation. And the issue wasn't so much the validity of his advice, and he gave me a list of people he thought I could rely on and help bring into government. But the issue wasn't so much the validity of the specific recommendations as the fact that one knew that there was a senior person who would care primarily 
about the peace and progress in the world. When I came back from negotiations, I often invited McCloy to come and see me and let me tell him what happened to get his judgment. And so it happened on one occasion. Only days later did I find out <clears throat> that it was the night of his 80th birthday party and that he came to Washington to talk to the Secretary of State without ever mentioning that he was being celebrated the night before for something that I could just as easily have done the next morning. So I mention this because I th think our country and the Western world in general needs to uplift some of his, uh, some of its concerns from the tactical to the long range. And our two honorees tonight have exemplified in many ways the importance of continuity, of wisdom, and of mutual respect. Mr. Hunt was for, oh, for 20 years Marshal of Harvard University. And my, when my secretary told me about this speech, she said, of course, you'll know him well from Harvard. But I was at Harvard before I was Henry Kissinger. <laughs> and I didn't know there was a position of Marshall because the Marshall of Harvard had the job of protocol chief of the university. And I was never at a level where I was interested with seeing eminences that needed to be placated and guided by Harvard. But then he spent a very long time also with the American Council for Germany. And uh, uh, this evening is a, a tribute to him. Mr. Ackling, it's uh, on it's, of course, the uh, head of the supervisory board of the Deutsche Bank. But when one looks at all of his positions, one can say that he has a role of a kind of conscience of, the, of, of key institutions in the German economy, something like McCloy had in our political system. So it's a great honor for me to be able to speak. And uh, I will leave it to historians to decide what brought me to this, to this podium, and uh, I want to say that also, that for people of uh, my upbringing, the relation with Germany can never be with just with a foreign country. Uh, I have, for example, I haven't lived in Fürth for 78 years. And why should I care what the Spielvereidigung Fürth 
that's in the second league uh, in uh, every weekend. But somehow I care. And the German embassy was... And before the internet, the German embassy was sort of blackmailing me because if I said things that were out of order, I wouldn't get the football results on Monday morning. <laughs> but these tides have marked my life. And I am, but I remember what Germany was like at the end of the war. And I have admired the courage with which Germany rebuilt itself and entered the democratic world and the extraordinary role it is playing and will have to play if we are going to achieve stability out of the incipient chaos. So thank you all very much for your role in the American Council. And when the history of the American Council is written, there will remain the mystery. Why did Henry Kissinger speak on a night when he wasn't even on the program? <laughs> <laughs> we'll settle that at future meetings. Thank you very much.